The South Puget Sound Salmon Enhancement Group is a non-profit, non-regulatory, non-government organization based in Olympia, Washington. Our organization's primary goal is to help people help fish. We do this by working collaboratively with state, federal, tribal, public, and private landowners to identify and implement meaningful salmon restoration projects on their property. The South Puget Sound Salmon Enhancement Group completes different project types all throughout the watersheds. They can occur up in the mountain streams, down to the floodplain valleys, and across the shore forms of Puget Sound. Each project type is different and unique for the salmon life cycle. For example, up in the mountain streams, we may build log jams that reconnect side channels and floodplains. Down in the lowland streams, we might remove old legacy dikes or berms. And across the shorelines of Puget Sound, we might re remove uh, barrier roads and culverts that cut off embayments from the Puget Sound tides. The South Puget Sound and Salmon Enhancement Group has been very effective in getting grant funding to do restoration projects. Um, they've been able to work with a variety of different partners, kind of bridge the gap between you know, political differences that may exist and just focus on habitat enhancement. And there aren't many other groups out there that ca can assume that role, so they've been very effective. Over the years, they've gotten, gosh, millions of dollars for salmon enhancement. They've got a real uh, impressive portfolio of restoration projects completed, so uh, it's, a, it's a great success story. Most people that come to Washington State that didn't grow up here, they come here because of its beauty, because of Puget Sound, because of the water, because of the salmon. But because they didn't grow up here, they don't recognize how fragile it is and how important every aspect of the environment is to the salmon. And the people want salmon, they want a pretty environment. Um, oftentimes they don't recognize the impact they have and we're having more and more impact on salmon. And we just have to recognize that and we have to minimize that impact if we want to maintain the beauty and maintain the salmon and everything else that people want when they come here. Uh, the salmon is an iconic figure in this whole area, and we have to do our part to protect them. If we don't do our part, they could, of course, they could slip away from our grasp and they could go extinct in more places than they already have. I've heard some of my colleagues say um, salmon are dying a, um, by a thousand cuts. Um, I like to say that we can repair those cuts with a thousand different types of band-aids or projects. Uh, so it's important to remember that not one project is going to save salmon by itself. It's going to be multiple projects over multiple years by multiple different groups and agencies that are going to have an impact on salmon. I feel really proud of the projects that we work on uh, because they all seem to have a, a positive immediate effect on salmon. This project was just completed last summer and two days after we completed the project there was adult Chinook and adult Coho utilizing this stream. Uh, I see as I'm standing in this creek right now there's uh, tons of juvenile salmon swimming around. Uh, it's just it is, it is a huge satisfaction of completing a project that took years to plan and implement. The real focus of these organizations is implementation. They don't get into the regulations, they don't get into the management, they want to implement projects that are beneficial for salmon recovery. You can't do any of this work without having a whole lot of partners um, and you have to have cooperation from landowners so they have to understand the value, they have to trust the organization that's doing that work, that they're going to do it right and that they won't be hurt in the process. I think it was the Salmon Enhancement Group initially when we first bought the property approached us and asked if they could start taking some stream surveys. So there were two culverts in the, in the creek and they were collapsing. I was worried about not having access. Uh, and so it was the Salmon Enhancement Group that was able to get involved with a number of other organizations so that the culverts could be replaced and the bridge could go in. And now it's a standing bridge across the creek so, there, so as fish swim up the creek it's just it's a gravel sided underneath and it just looks like a creek that flows. They came and they did their job and they, they did it well, they did it efficiently and it turned out exactly how they told me it would turn out. They were great people to have around. I, I missed it when they were gone. I enjoyed <laughs> the process. This organization has a list of partners that's pages and pages long, and we have always valued that. Maybe it's always important to recognize the role that the tribes play in this particular region, uh, in Washington especially. Uh, 
they have a sense of nature and a sense of recovery that most folks don't have. And that's their primary objective is to have salmon recovered uh, and the rest of the resources recovered. And um, so it's, it's very valuable working with them. Uh, I see the tribe's relationship with South Sound Salmon Handsome Group as, as a partnership. We're both uh, trying to accomplish the same thing. Obviously, they're not in the, the harvest side of things. They're trying to uh, work on projects that ultimately improve habitat, whether it's marine, uh, estuary, or freshwater, or upper watershed projects such as this. I'm standing at River Mile 6 on the Greenwater River, which is the center of a multi-year restoration project involving uh, the removal of about 1.5 miles of forest road, as well as the installation of log jams with more to follow in the future. Uh, the idea uh, with this project is to take out a, a road that was constricting the channel, increasing the gradient, and reducing the habitat quality of about two miles of the Greenwater River and uh, restoring large woody debris to help stabilize the channel and improve habitat complexity and fish rearing conditions in a channel that had suffered from years of logging related activities, sediment input, loss of riparian conditions, and the removal, the act of removal of large wood from the channel. When you do this type of work, it's very rewarding because the fish will give you an indication of the success almost immediately. As soon as the, the log jams were completed, the, the fish came back in the fall and we saw fish spawning in much of this area. We've made a lot of progress. We're still not where we want to be because the numbers of naturally spawning fish and wild fish aren't where we want them to be. But certainly the enhancement efforts that have taken place are, are proving successful and hopefully habitat projects such as this will help bolster uh, the natural survival. Salmon are important to the ecosystem because it's a good indicator of watershed health. Both salmon and people need cold, clean, clear, and constant water. Also, there's 137 documented species that rely on salmon carcasses at some point in their life stage. If salmon exist in a system at one time and they no longer do so, you have to ask yourself why. What are the, uh, the, the mechanisms responsible for the decline or their absence? And we as people need to work towards that understanding and uh, restoring the conditions that uh, allow and promote their survival.